टुडे वी आर हियर विथ माय एम डी स्टूडंट डॉक्टर दीपक पाठक ही इज वेल अकस्टम टू द पेशंट एंड द प्रैक्टिस एज वेल ही इज डूइंग द एम डी एज वेल एज ही हैज अ लॉट ऑफ क्लिनिकल एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड दैट्स वाय ही हैज परचेस्ड वन सिंपल इंस्ट्रूमेंट विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ पल्स ऑक्सीमीटर दिस पल्स ऑक्सीमीटर इज एक्चुअली मेन्शन इन द सिलेबस ऑफ द एम डी क्रिया ऑफ द एन यू एच एस ऑफ द सी सी एम कोर्स and it is very well essential that each and every student should understand the little bit details about this pulse oximeter because it is a very useful instrument in our day to day practice basically it is available from the very low cost i think dr deepak is a company is a contact company contact company and how much uh, price is uh, available in the uh, shop 1200 One thousand two hundred is the only minimum price. Of course, there is a range. If you go higher and higher versions of different modalities, then the cost will be more. But in this particular handy instrument, this is very handy. You can see, and this has to, even it has a, like a keychain. You can carry like a keychain, and so it's a portable instrument. So whenever you have to go to the patient's house and check the two important things, which doctor you are checking, the which two important things, uh, pulse and oxygen content of the patient. Uh, in uh, chronic diseases like asthma or uh, COPD, uh, chronic obstructive lung disease or pulmonary disease, uh, we can detect uh, uh, like states like uh, status asthmaticus, uh, in which the oxygen content of the patient is reduced with the below the normal limit. Doctor Deepak, I will uh, try to ask you your practical experiences that you have told before that uh, this our discussion. Uh, you are using for basically two things pulse and the oxygen, oxygen content what is called as a ps spo2 spo2 100% oxygen or partial oxygen we call it that correct uh, in practice we can uh, detect patients uh, like this uh, we say that uh, when pulse is uh, more than 100 and that is uh, more than normal range uh, we can say that they are uh, they are in some kind of infection uh, whether it is bacterial or viral we can detect after pathology test only but primary diagnosis is done by this method only basically uh, fever it always gives the tachycardia huh? tachycardia and bradycardia as usual our clinical experiences like putting the uh, our radial pulse and putting the fingers on it it will take some long time say maybe 1 minute or 2 minutes ideally it should be done then for 3 times and then you take the average but in this particular case it is giving within the 10 or 15 seconds at the reading of the pulse this also creates a good impression on the patient because the doctor is using the technological help and it's more accurate and something like that so there are two things one is clinical impression and another is instrumental impression so here we get the advantage we can detect the tachycardia and bradycardia all bacterial infections usually cause like pneumonitis tonsillitis then urinary tract infection everywhere you get the tachycardia more than 100 more than 110 pulse per minute but in typhoid or in malaria or in some viral cases you get a relative bradycardia that means if you touch the patient's uh, uh, neck or the fo uh, forehead then you will get a little bit higher temperature even if you get in the thermometer it will around 102 or 103 degrees fahrenheit but if you take the pulse it will show only the 100 or 110 which is called as a relative bradycardia so bradycardia tachycardia normal pulse can be detected by this pulse oximeter second thing is o2 usually it should be 100 pulse uh, if i am correct uh, it should be above 90% only okay. as per rule uh, we know that after 90% or it uh, falls when 90% below we need o2 therapy or icu assistance uh, but uh, in some cases we the relative bradycardia or relative tachycardia the oxygen content reduces to uh, below level like 95% 94 92 or 91 that can be any range uh, in fever it reduces to 91 to 95% second thing he has mentioned about the anemic patient that means he says that during the acute phase of the any bacterial fever there is a uh, disturbance in the erythropoiesis process wbcs are more but rbcs are also getting more but they are not of good quality immature rbcs they come into the flow and temporary type of what you can say the subclinical type of anemia hb may not be showing that particular drop down but this particular condition because of the little bit physiological or other pathophysiological lowering down of the uh, erythropoiesis process it gives a temporary type of the anemic condition to the patient and it causes the dyspnea on exertion or dyspnea even the rest so these conditions also can be detected because that naturally when there is anemia oxygen carrying capacity is also lower and oxygen is also less 
uh, there is a little bit difference in my opinion because in COPD, especially the cases of emphysema, you get you have to detect the uh, oxygen carrying capacity or the oxygen in the blood, and it is found to be more of 40, 50 percent, and it is too low that the patient should have carry the immediate oxygen cylinder either at home or in the hospital and he has to provide the O2 therapy. There are different techniques how you can provide the O2 therapy but O2 therapy is a must for the COPD patient showing that uh, oxygen percent or the partial pressure is very low because just like a ejection fraction, do you remember in the 2D echo there is ejection fraction. If it is below 50 percent then it is called a weak heart. Similarly, here, if you find that below it is a 60 or 70 oxygen in your blood, then that is weak lung. And for that weak lung, you have to give immediately the oxygen. Now we will go directly to the demonstration of how we can use this. So I request Dr. Deepak, you can put to my index finger and uh, Dr. Neha Mari will, our student, will take a close up. This is the start button, we have to start it. So very simple, just you have to put the index finger in it and automatically the calibration will start or the internal, their software will start. This uh, machine now shows uh, SpO2 percentage of uh, Dr. RRD sir, it is 98 percent okay. and pulse rate per minute is 91 to 89 percent. It is fluctuating as we know that it is physiological. Yeah, so it is pulse rate is nearly about 87 at the moment you can see and the oxygen is 97 percent. So it's uh, more or in the normal physiological way. Now how to close it? Uh, by removing uh, it is auto off. Uh, it gets closed when there is no finger in it. The basic mechanism in it is like this. Uh, there is an infrared lamp in it. It catches the temperature infrared waves from the blood circulation and then it gives us reading. Uh, when we remove the finger, it is auto off. Okay. First, we have to start like this with the start button. Okay. So I think it is in the close up. Everything is very clear to the students. You can show it the instrument from all the sides. For example, in the close up, this is the starting button. This is a display monitor like this thing. And this just on and off like this. You have to put the index finger in it like this. And it is very, very easy to carry. It's very portable like this, you can carry. So I think this is a short demonstration of 10 minutes around of the pulse oximeter. So thank you, Dr. Deepak Patak, and thanks to all my PG students. Thank you.